Do you know that there is only one God in three eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you know that Jesus said he is the only way to heaven, and his death and resurrection bring forgiveness of sins to all who believe? Welcome to the Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study God's Word, the Bible, together. Welcome to the Pastor Study. Many years ago, my Lutheran bishop was Herbert Chilstrom, very liberal man, very pro-gay, pro-abortion rights. He led the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America in a terrible direction. It got so bad, I had to lead my congregation out of the ELCA, and we joined a more biblical branch of Lutheranism. Bishop Chilstrom died four years ago, and I noticed sitting at his funeral was Minnesota Governor Tim Walls, a Lutheran, and I'm guessing now, but maybe Governor Walls thinks, well, if my Lutheran bishop can be pro-abortion rights and pro-gay, I can too. So now Tim Walls, as you know, has been uh, running for Vice President of the United States. Just in case you don't know this, let me do this for just a minute. Tim Walls fairly recently all this has happened, signed a bill making Minnesota a trans refuge state so children from all over America can come to Minnesota to get sex change operations, sex change operations on children. And when he signed the legislation, he said, we are stopping bigotry and hatred at the border of Minnesota. So if you don't think children should get sex change operations, I guess you're a bigot. Governor Walls signed uh, a legislation requiring tampons in the boys' room of public schools ages 4th grade through 12th. Governor Walls was the first governor to visit an abortion clinic, and he told the abortionists at Planned Parenthood, we've got your back. And then more recently... Kamala Harris and him went to an abortion clinic uh, for a second time here in the state of Minnesota. Minnesota used to have minor restrictions on abortion. They're all gone. Uh, Today, you can get an abortion right up to the day of delivery in Minnesota. A minor who can't get a tattoo uh, in Minnesota can get an abortion without even parents knowing about it or consenting to it. We used to have a law where if the baby survived the abortion and is on the table alive, the doctor had to try to save the baby. That's gone under Walls. And under Tim Walls, we now have recreational marijuana in Minnesota. Walls also recently says he wants to ban book bans. As you probably know, concerned parents around the country are horrified when they see some of the pornographic literature in some children's libraries. They've been going to school boards. Well, Walls wants to ban book bans. The sad thing about this is Walls' beliefs are kind of in line with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. If you go to an ELCA Lutheran Church, do you know that your offering dollars can pay for abortions in the ELCA health care plan for pastors and their families? Abortion for any reason whatsoever. The ELCA health care plan, also funded by your offering dollars, pay for hormone blockers so minors cannot develop their God-given sexuality. So, today... We, we need to talk about how heresy, false teaching, is hurting the church and America. Today we're going to talk about the ELCA Lutherans, of which I used to be a part, the United Methodists, the Episcopalians, the PCUSA Presbyterians, the United Church of Christ, and the Catholic Church. Three years ago, President Biden, who's very pro-abortion, goes to the Vatican, and according to Biden, now this is his, his saying, the Pope told me, you're a good Catholic, you should keep taking communion. Let's pray. God the Father, we pray for the churches of America that somehow those that have gone astray would come back. 
And Lord, we pray that if, if these churches will not repent, that you'd empty them out and move people into good churches where they'll hear the truth and be saved. God, speak to us now about what's going on in our world and in the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First, let's talk about the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Now, I go to garage sales a lot. And so a couple weeks ago, I'm pulling up to a garage sale, a white-haired man, oh, Pastor Brock, love your TV show. Watch it all the time. His 45 or so year old daughter, not so much. And she says to me, well, I'm a liberal Lutheran, and we just took our teenagers to the ELCA teen convention. You probably don't agree with that, do you? I said, no, I do not. They put a transgender, non-binary preacher on stage to preach to the students. Well, I know, but I think we should love everybody and invite everybody to church. I agreed. And, and she says, well, I believe God made us just the way we are. We're all perfect. I said, we're not perfect. We're sinners in desperate need of a Savior. Well, I, I just think we, love, we should love everybody. I said, Part of loving people is telling them the truth. And then I said to her, I have same-sex attraction. But because of what the Bible teaches, I don't go that route. And she said, well, the Bible was written so many years ago, and God gave us a brain. I said, I don't think I'm smarter than God. And the Holy Spirit, God, inspired the writing of the Bible. You know, I drove away, prayed for her. And then I looked up her ELCA Lutheran Church on the internet. And if you go to the church website, here's a picture of her two Lutheran pastors wearing gay apparel, rainbow stuff, handing out rainbow flags at a gay pride festival. These are ELCA Lutheran pastors. Next item. In California, there's a transgender ELCA pastor. This is a woman who now is trying to look like a man, and she is out to queer the church, as he, no, she put it. I refuse to say he. And here is the way she does the, the invocation. In the name of God, our mother, Jesus, our sister, and the Holy Spirit. And this pastor will get no discipline from the ELCA. This kind of thing has been going on for years, and bishops are not doing anything to stop this. Next item, and this is one of the, I've been done, I, if you've watched the show, you've seen me do heresy. This is one of the worst. The ELCA has published a book for teenagers. And in the book, it says, porn can be silly fun. Jesus was totally fine with queerness, and parents can be wrong. This book was edited by Lee Finke. She's the, excuse me, he, he looks like a she. He is a transgender legislator here in Minnesota who helped get the sex change operations for children through our legislator, legislature. And so he is the one who edited this, this book. The book says that... Um, don't listen to your parents if they are not gay affirming. You know what's best for you. And the book says, porn can be useful. Uh, porn can be a safe way to explore your sexuality. You can also take that information when applicable and put it to use on your partner's body. The book recommends watching porn with your partner, which can open up conversations about sex and pleasure, stimulate our natural arousal systems, or it can be just a silly, fun thing to experience together. That's written to teenagers and their partners. Next item. ELCA Gay Pride Worship Service. Online, you can watch an ELCA gay pride service where the pastor before Holy Communion says, bring your trans bodies, your scarred bodies, your pierced bodies. Then the pastor reads from a children's book, "'Twas the night before gay pride. The drag queens all brushed their wigs with great care." 
next item. The ELCA recently elected its seventh practicing homosexual bishop. His name is uh, Bishop Pipfo, and he writes this. During the last LGBT Pride Month, my faith as a Christian leads me to see the victories enjoyed by the LGBT community as the work of God in Christ. I celebrate the advances as the way Christ is fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy to let the oppressed go free. Next item. The ELCA National Magazine is called Living Lutheran, is very liberal, and they have an article recently uh, celebrating gay pride with a queer transgender lesbian who calls God a queer transgressive mother. The next item, and this one especially grieves me. When I was 17 years old, I went to a Lutheran Bible camp in Custer, South Dakota. It's called Outlaw Ranch Lutheran Camp. When I was 17, it was a wonderful week of Christian fellowship. Well, they just held their second annual LGBT Pride Camp for 14 through 18-year-olds so that they can affirm their gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender identities. Do you know the studies show if, if, a, if a minor has gender dysphoria? If you leave that child alone, the great majority of them just grow out of it. I wish Outlaw Lutheran Camp in South Dakota would leave those children alone. Next item. And the, the Living Lutheran Magazine is very liberal, but this is the most liberal article I've ever seen in it. ELCA bisexual pastor wants to overthrow cisgender patriarchy and capitalism. Today we, uh, we interview pastor and activist Ellie Dowd, she, they. She says this, I am currently finishing up my PhD in queer theology. Growing up in the church, I received a lot of messages about the sinfulness of my identity as a bisexual queer pastor. This deeply harmed me. We can't continue to affirm theology that is killing people. The ELCA needs to move forward celebrating LGBTQIA plus people. What I want to know about your church is, are you protesting and taking the streets? Does your church budget and calendar reflect that LGBT is a priority? Are we in your pulpits? Are we in your Sunday school illustrations? I pray for the dismantling of white supremacy, for an end to cisgender patriarchy, for the fall of capitalism and empire. How would you like that to be your pastor? Next item. Do you remember, if you've watched the show, that I told you that way back in 2009, when the ELCA Lutherans voted to ordain practicing homosexuals, the convention center where they were meeting had a tornado come and rip off part of the roof. The big liberal Central Lutheran Church next door to the convention center had its big iron cross ripped from the top of the steeple and it hung up upside down for months. Nevertheless, after the weather, the ELCA Lutherans still went into the convention hall and voted by 66.6% 6, to start ordaining practicing homosexuals. Did Central Lutheran learn a lesson from that? Nope. Uh, in fact, last month, LGBT choirs from around the country came to Minneapolis for a choir festival. Where did they perform? Central Lutheran Church. Next. Um, <clears throat> A lesbian pastor has just been elected the bishop of Minneapolis, and uh, her name is Jen Nagel, and at her and she's married to a woman who's a United Church of Christ pastor, and she the, here's the prayer they pray at her church: Our Creator, our Mother, our Father in Heaven, hallowed be Your name. Or you can go to my seminary, Luther Seminary, which has become very liberal, and they'll have a closing benediction in the name of the parent and the son and the Holy Spirit, getting rid of the sexist God the Father. All right, let's turn from the Lutherans and let's talk about the United Methodist Church. Uh, some months ago, the United Methodist Church followed suit, and now it too voted to ordain practicing homosexual pastors and to perform gay weddings. Now, last week, 
there was a 150 mile garage sale in Iowa. <laughs> and so I had to go. And you go through all these little towns in Iowa going to garage sales. So I did that last week. I was amazed by how many little towns in Iowa have a United Methodist Church. I thought it was mostly Catholics and Lutherans down there, but lots of Methodists. And I'm wondering, well, how are liberal Methodist pastors selling their sodomy vote to small town Iowa? And I passed a United Methodist Church and it had a sign in front. We choose to be on the right side of history, human rights for all. And it appears to me that the pastor thinks it's more important to be on the right side of history than the right side of God. Now the good news is many congregations are now leaving the liberal United Methodist Church and joining the global Methodist Church, which is biblical. When, next item, when the United Methodists voted to ordain practicing homosexuals, they opened up a Pandora's box, because I can guarantee you the next thing is to affirm transgenderism. In fact, they're already doing it, I think. So here's a lesbian United Methodist pastor who preaches a sermon where she calls upon her denomination to devise a sacred ritual worship service for people transitioning from one sex to the other. Next item, now we turn to the United Church of Christ. Believe it or not, it's even worse than everything I've mentioned. For many years, the United Church of Christ, which almost doesn't exist anymore because it's shrunk so much, has been promoting this kind of thing. So if uh, there is a United Church of Christ gay pastor who has done a video, and in, the, in this message, he defends the fact that he, as a gay pastor, I have multiple sex partners, and he thinks that's fine, and he defends it. Then there's a second a gay pastor who also preaches similar stuff, and then he, he says this. He breaks down and he cries while he's speaking. Some people have been telling me that what I am doing is wrong, and he finds that hurtful. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hurtful. 1 Corinthians 6 says if you continue in impenitent sin, you're not going to heaven. People aren't trying to hurt you, friend. They're trying to get you into heaven from, away from eternal hurt. You need to repent of your sins and put your faith in Christ. Next, let's talk about the Presbyterian Church USA, also very liberal denomination. They started ordaining practicing homosexuals about 10 years ago, and they've been shrinking ever since. Well, here is a prayer that they prayed at their last convention. I say prayer because my pet peeve is when somebody doesn't really pray during their prayer, but they use it as propaganda. Listen to this prayer. As Presbyterians in this era of escalating anti-trans rhetoric and legislation, our faith calls us to affirm God's movement among and through the trans community. Let us confess the ways in which we continue to fall short in protecting and celebrating the gender diverse memories of God's family. When we refuse to recognize the unique ways our transgender siblings participate in co-creation, I think they're talking about artificial insemination, and when we uh, refuse to see how they manifest the divine image of God in ways far vaster than our boxes can build, forgive us, transform us, creator God. That's a prayer. Well, lastly, the Episcopal Church is also shrinking into oblivion. It's, it's been hyper-liberal for years. So recently they had an Episcopal priest handing out Holy Communion at a gay pride festival. This is a priest who also wrote a newspaper column against Christians because there was a satanic temple invocation at a county board meeting and Christians protested that, not this Episcopal priest. He wrote this in the newspaper. Instead, Christians should be concerned with those forces in our society that are complicit in systems of poverty and inequity, which criminalize women's health, abortion, and which lead queer kids to think that they are broken. Ah, uh, wow. So, everybody, um, my point here is, these denominations have just gone astray. And let me tell you why I believe the devil exists. The very same three demons 
have invaded all of these denominations. United Church of Christ, United Methodists, PCUSA, Presbyterians, ELCA, Lutherans. United. So, and, and what are the three demons? Demon number one is called universalism. Everybody goes to heaven. You don't have to believe in Jesus. Everybody will be saved. There is no hell. The second demon is, let's get rid of God the Father. He's sexist. And the third demon is, let's get rid, get rid of what the Bible says about premarital sex, abortion, homosexuality, etc. And, I mean, it, these are like the same churches now because of how they've gone. Well, let me close with this. When I was a young preacher, I knew old Pastor Maynard Force, godly, biblical, white-haired pastor. He was Herbert Chilstrom's professor, the, the liberal Lutheran bishop. And I remember how Maynard grieved over how liberal Herbert Chilstrom had become. And when, when Chilstrom and others started promoting homosexuality in the church and these other things, I remember old Maynard Force said, we are nicing people right into hell. So what do we do all, with all this? Well, here's, here's what I want you to do. Join a good Bible-believing church. If you go to one of these denominations that have gone crazy, I know if you've been there 50 years, it'll be hard. But there are still a lot of good churches out there, Bible-believing churches. You know, they're, they're a good option. If you're a Methodist, you go to the Global Methodist. If you're a Lutheran, you go to Missouri Center. You know, there's good uh, But find, and if you don't go to church at all right now, every Christian needs to find a good Bible-preaching church and go regularly. So that's the solution to all this. Find a good church, transfer there, or just start there, and let your soul be fed by the Scriptures. And so that's the solution to this problem. Another solution is... Do you pray for the churches? Do you ever pray for the church? Do you pray for America? Wow, do we need prayer right now. And, and we need to start singing an old hymn that really applies for today. This is from a long, long time ago, but it goes like this. Lord, keep us steadfast in thy word. Curb those who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from thy son and bring to naught all he hath done. Lord Jesus Christ, thy power make known, for thou art Lord of lords alone. Defend thy Christendom that we may sing thy praise eternally. Say a prayer for the church today. Amen. Welcome to the portion of the pastor study where we ask Pastor Brock questions regarding the Bible. Pastor Brock, our first letter is from a viewer. First of all, I enjoy watching you on TV. Your program is biblical and full of wisdom. I am 72 years old and was raised in the Lutheran Church, but later became a Baptist. When my first baby was born, there was a lot of hurt and drama when we decided not to have him baptized as an infant. Today, my Lutheran family members all think we're good because of their infant baptism. There is no interest in salvation, accepting Jesus, Bible reading, or even attending their Lutheran church. It appears they are resting on their infant baptism to enter heaven's glory. Can you explain infant baptism and salvation? Yes, and I'm going to, I think, I'm a Lutheran. Let me give you the Lutheran heresy, false teaching. I got baptized as a baby. I got my ticket. I'm going to heaven. And that, I haven't been in church for 30 years. I don't really pray. But hey, I got my ticket. That's a heresy. Uh, the Baptist heresy is I prayed the sinner's prayer. I asked Jesus into my heart. I got my ticket. I'm living with my girlfriend. I'm getting drunk every weekend. But hey, I got my ticket. Both of those were heresy. And Jesus said, he who endures to the end will be saved. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope you've been baptized. I hope you've prayed and accepted Christ. But he who endures to the end with Christian faith will be saved. So, uh, yeah, you got to be careful of, of heresy. Now, Mona, I'm a Lutheran. I came this close to becoming a Baptist when I graduated from my Baptist college. And I went home to my Lutheran pastor. Pastor Schaff, where is it that they baptize babies? And he, the whole, if you look at the book of Acts, whole households were baptized. Mm -hmm. That would have included children. 
And in Colossians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul likens baptism to Old Testament circumcision. And Old Testament circumcision was done on eight-day-old babies. Mm -hmm. And we can go back and forth on this, but uh, Catholics, Lutherans, Methodists, Episcopalians, Presbyterians, we all baptize babies. Baptists and most evangelicals don't. I don't think we're going to change our mind on this one. I mean, uh, until the second coming, when everyone will discover, Lutherans were right! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's a joke. In fact, I'm going to say this in anger some conservative Lutherans. I believe in infant baptism. I think it's biblical. If on the last day I discover the Baptists were right, I'm not going to faint. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they're right. I think we have biblical basis in, in all, pretty much all of church history until the 1500s supporting. Uh, it never says in the Bible you have to be 16-year-olds to be baptized. It never gives you an age. Paul, Jesus is just go and preach the gospel baptizing. He doesn't say, but make sure they're over 16 years old. None of that. So there you go. All right. Second one. Yeah. I have a question. Since God knows what's in our hearts, does he hear our prayers when we only think them and not say them aloud? I know scripture includes statements about praying aloud, but is all that required? Yeah. So if I just say a prayer in my head, Lord Jesus, help me today, whatever, and I don't say it with my lips, does God still hear it? Of course he does, because mm -hmm. he's God. He's omniscient. That means he knows everything. Mm -hmm. So, and, and a verse that really nails this, 1 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah is praying for a baby. And just her lips were moving, and Eli comes up and thinks she's drunk. And what are you doing? I'm praying. That's what I'm doing. She was praying, but not out loud. So, mm -hmm. And of course, God heard her prayer because he answered her prayer and gave her the baby Samuel. So, yes, God hears our prayers, even when you just pray them in your head. Okay, yeah. Yeah. good answer. For years, I have struggled with pornography, but I still fall. It makes me think that I will go to hell when I die. Your thoughts? Well, uh, my question is, are you living in it? Do you uh, watch pornography every day? Or is it a stumble where when you do it, you repent, you get mm -hmm. forgiveness, you get back up and you throw the pornography away? If you're living in it, I think your soul's in danger. Mm -hmm. if, you've, if you've done it even for the 80th time, but there's true repentance and faith, and First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, even if we've done it a number of times. But if there's true repentance, there's true forgiveness from the Lord. But if you're living in it, everybody's got to get help on this. I, on my iPhone, I have covenant eyes, mm -hmm. so I, can't, I cannot access pornography. You need to fight. You need mm -hmm. to do something like that. I have a prayer partner. We hold each, we hold each other accountable. Uh, every Christian needs to fight this stuff because it's everywhere mm -hmm. now. And Mona, we don't have much time left, but everybody, thanks for being with us this week. Pray for our ministry. Our money is kind of down right now, and we don't want to withdraw from stations. So if the Lord nudges you to support us, uh, please do that here in a minute. And thank you. Pray for us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching the Pastor Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the good news of Jesus Christ because of the generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org or write the Pastor Study, P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.